I wanted to visit Iraq's two holiest cities, but I'm not a Muslim. The cities of Najaf and Karbala are famous across the Islamic world, but would I be accepted and treated well as a foreigner and non-Muslim? I wanted to investigate. In addition to this, I wanted to see if there was more to these cities than just the shrines. What are the locals like and would I be able to make friends? Before I could begin this adventure, however, I had to get there by passing a few military checkpoints and taking local transport. So let's go. But now I want to go to Najaf. We'll see how my bargaining skills go. Good, how are you? You! Love it. Najaf? Najaf. Alrighty, well I found a taxi, 15 Aussie dollars, so 10, Aussie, uh, 10 American for a shared. Three hours, that sounds alright. I have no idea though, just people shouting at me. <laughs> I do kind of like it though, it's fun, it's, uh, it's, it's got a vibe. In case you're wondering, this is how you get around Iraq. Um, you go to these garages, they just call them the garage, um, and you get in a shared taxi. Back in the shared taxi life. Salam Habibis, how are you? Hello! Nice to meet you friends! Love the shared taxi life, it's a video! Australia! Australia? Okay! Okay! Inshallah you can come! Inshallah you love Australia! Stopped at a military checkpoint. Um, most of the times they haven't asked for anything. These are just all, all, all along the road, just behind me. They asked for my passport, said hello. I kept saying, Salam Alaikum Habibi, and that worked. But uh, yeah, nothing to worry about. No one seems to be impressed by this giant mosque, but I think it's cool. Just arrived in Najaf. Better mosque to come, apparently. So the first thing I like to do when I get to a new city is just walk around and see what happens. Check out the vibe, look at the shops, try and buy something to eat. So let's go. Well, our BB told me that your, your father is in Australia. Right. Mashallah. And he would not let me pay for this. I really tried. He's a very nice man. Beautiful, sweet shop. Everything here looks absolutely delicious. Shall we do? Hello. Shut up now. I don't know if I captured that properly, but um, that guy, yeah, super friendly. Just would not take money for, for the baked goods. He, um, he looked at the clock and said, Australia is nine hours ahead. And I'm like, oh, do you have a brother in Australia? He said, my dad. Um, so yeah, he must really like Australia. Or he's just a really kind guy. So I do really want to visit the Najaf Mosque and Shrine, but the first thing I need to do is meet a friend. She's visiting, so we're going to grab some food. Getting into this delicious falafel sandwich. I think it costs a dollar, Australian dollar. Bloody mm. alright. Isn't that right, Coco? Look at this Arabic skills. She speaks Australian. Oh yeah. <laughs> Fucking on ya, mate. Fucking on ya. <laughs> It was a delicious falafel, but it was definitely not filling enough. So Coco and I went to explore and find more food, but ended up making a new friend. How we doing? Good. This beautiful man would Thanks. refuse to take our money and just bought us a feast. This beautiful, and he's a beautiful he's, man. He's a beautiful yeah. He's single, so come get him. He's from Russia. 24. 24. 24. Engineer. Oh, I like him. I'm liking Iraq. Good place. All right, it's 5 a.m. and I feel like fucking shit. So I'm throwing up in my room, and a headache it is the worst. So, um, gonna walk around and see if any of these pharmacies are open. Oh, joys of traveling. Alrighty, well that was a very average day. It um, went from being 5 a.m where I spoke last to 5 p.m. now, where I feel quite a bit better. Um, finally gonna go check out the main attraction here, which is the shrine of Imam Ali. So let's go check it out. It's gonna be really cool and I'll tell you all about it. You can see by all the people behind me that this is a spot of you know, immense religious tourism. Um, I'll explain in a minute once we get in there why this is such a special site, but such a vibe, um, yeah, it's gonna be good. I just walked out of the most beautiful mosque I've ever seen. Inside there is the tomb of Imam Ali. Um, lots of mirrored rooms in there. It's absolutely stunning. And I guess the reason why this place is famous, first of all, it's the third most holy site in Shia Islam. 
uh, and it's because Imam Ali is buried there. He's special because he is the cousin and son-in-law of the Prophet Muhammad. And in Shia Islam, he's a very, very important figure. He's the first Imam and he's also the fourth Caliph. So, very special experience. Inside there, people were kissing the door on the way in. They were putting their hands out to touch the, the, the tomb. Had really good energy. So having seen the shrine and being incredibly impressed, we were then told about one more really special site. So let's go check it out. So all around me, every direction, this is the world's largest cemetery. So I'm still in Najaf in Iraq and there's actually over 6 million bodies here. And the reason why this is the world's largest cemetery and why it's so famous is because it's close to Imam Ali. So Shias from all across the world like to be buried here. And this is just one small part of an enormous expanse of a cemetery. Really impressive. This place is unreal. Like it just keeps going and going. Um, all these different types of tombs and headstones and photos of, of lost loved ones. It's um, yeah, this whole city is is a very spiritual place. And now I have the world's largest cemetery. It's definitely something. We then took a shared minivan from Najaf to Karabada and I said goodbye to Coco. I was finally there in Iraq's most holy city. Alrighty, after a uh, one or two hour shared minivan in the second, I guess, of these twin cities, these holy cities, Karabada. Should be some good fun, but I want to go take a rest and drop my bag off. Got the whole backpacker thing going on. After napping, I couldn't wait and just had to explore. This is Karabada and it's very important let me explain why. 1300 years ago in this town a man was killed. A man whose death, which would solidify the fracturing which had already begun of a newly established religion, Islam, into its two main branches, Sunni and Shia. His name was Hussein, son of Ali and grandson of Prophet Muhammad. Hussein died on the 10th of Muharram, Muharram being a month in the Islamic calendar. And still today, Shia Muslims all across the world still commemorate his death in what was known as the Battle of Karbala. This is the town of Karbala, Iraq. This is his shrine, and every year over 30 million Muslims go on a pilgrimage to where he is laid to rest. It's absolutely beautiful. So I did it. I saw the two famous shrines in Najaf and Karbala, but I wasn't done yet. Before I left, I wanted to meet more locals, and actually found a new friend on a couchsurfing app. He said he'd show me a really cool castle that not many foreigners visit. And I'm not gonna lie, it was pretty creepy, but in the best possible way. So let's go check it out. Getting Indiana Jones vibes here. All right, some bats. A lot of fucking, a lot of bats. No, there's bats. Oh God. So what's the name of the castle? Al Khadr. Hasn Al Khadr. That's that's. What? Say it again. Al Khadr. Al Khadr. Oh yeah. Al Khadr. Al Khadr. <laughs> wow, whatever it's called. It's pretty cool that it's empty and beautiful. Oh, very cool. My new friend had one last treat in store for me. He wanted to show me Iraq's most famous food. What do we what do we have here? We have grilled fish and uh, here is caviar. Caviar. Caviar here. Look at that. This is gonna be good. <laughs> bon appetit. Yay! Iraq has a very small coastline, but as you somehow have very good fish. Come to Iraq with the fish. So it turns out you can visit Najaf and Karbala as a non-Muslim. And in fact, I recommend everyone come visit. Locals are so friendly, and in fact, so far, the hospitality in Iraq has been the best I've experienced anywhere in the world. Right, now back to the meal. Just when I thought things couldn't get any better, my friend helped me find a spot for dessert. Anyone who knows me knows that I love kunafa, so when I saw this shop, I knew I had to stop and check it out. First Iraqi kunafa. As a kunafa connoisseur, <laughs> as a fucking expert of kunafa now, we'll see what I reckon. So, this kanafa was good, but the best I've eaten in my life by far was in Baghdad. So join me in the next video, where I'll show you Baghdad, a place where I spent nearly two weeks exploring one of the most interesting 
and chaotic cities in the world. Cheers and thanks for watching.